Here's how to double your pull-ups in the next 30 days. Pull-ups are one of the best exercises if you wanna build slabs of muscle on your biceps, on your lats, on your mid-back, upper back, and even your forearms. In addition, pull-ups are incredible exercise for building both absolute and relative strength being stronger for your size. But for most lifters, doing six, eight, 10 pull-ups, just about impossible. And with good form, without kipping, like you're dry humping the air, damn near impossible. Which altogether leads to a host of issues. Pull-ups are very commonly put into workout programs, but most people can't do enough of them with enough volume, with great technique, in order to really maximize the muscle building impact. So we're gonna break down some simple strategies that you can take to double your pull-ups over the next 30 days. Now, pull-ups are great for three reasons. First, they're a great indication of relative strength, how strong you are for your size. Generally speaking, people who have relative strength can move their body through space easier, meaning it's great for overall sports performance. Number two, balanced training. Most people spend so much time training the front side of their body. That dedicated program designed to help you improve your pull-up strength and endurance will do wonders for posterior chain muscular development. Number three, dedication. Listen, anytime you embark on a challenge that's gonna have you doubling the reps on an exercise you probably struggled with before, it requires a lot of discipline, grit, and determination to get it done. And with this program, you're gonna have a bulletproof plan to double your pull-ups. Here are six things we're gonna do to double your chin-ups over the next 30 days. The first strategy that nearly nobody talks about except for my guy Tanner Shuck, you have to get leaner. Because pull-ups are an example of an exercise that's predicated on relative strength, how strong you are for your size, if you're fat, if you have too much body fat, you're gonna suck at pull-ups. You're gonna be kipping your way up trying to complete a rep. So if you stand down and you're taking a shower and you can't see your dick, there's a pretty good chance you've gotta drop some body weight if you wanna improve your chin-up performance. So what do we have to focus on? Well, we gotta focus on your diet. Yes, follow a comprehensive training program. You can still follow this program and improve on your chin-ups, but if your diet is out of whack, if you're not focused on eating at a calorie deficit with consistent protein intake, you're not gonna be able to get that much better at chin-ups because relative strength is gonna improve so slowly. My recommendation, man, you should be getting down to 12 to 15% body fat, meaning you should at least have some amount of abdominal visibility if you really wanna make chin-ups a great exercise for building strength and building muscle. And of course, to look right naked. Second, we have to dial in your technique. Doing shitty reps for volume just further ingrains shitty reps. This is why so many people get banged up with wrist, elbow, and shoulder issues when they're doing chin-ups because they do not have great technique to begin with. Oh, and by the way, I keep saying chin-ups and pull-ups interchangeably, just a habit. For the sake of this, we're doing pull-ups, they work the same muscle groups, just a little bit more of a lat bias with the double overhand grip. Anyway, when it comes to technique, we have to focus on doing things where you're one to two reps shy of failure when it comes to the actual training program itself. There's a big difference between building strength and testing strength. So focus on controlling every inch of the rep. Try to avoid grinding reps and focus on perfect technique. Now, when it comes to dialing in your pull-up technique, a few things we need to focus on here. One, I'm gonna use the functional trainer here. This is a little bit shorter than the squat rack I have, but the frankly, the lighting is a little bit better for the video. And so what we wanna focus on, double overhand grip just outside shoulder width. If we go very wide, for a lot of people, that's actually gonna to lead to a lot of issues with shoulder health being forced into greater amounts of external rotation. So shoulder width just outside is gonna be perfect. Now, when we begin the chin up, we like to have a very slight bend in the elbows and some tension. Our shoulders are not all the way up towards our ears. Instead, we are slightly retracted with a little bit of a bend in the elbows and a slight contraction. When we're in that position, our shoulders are gonna be much more stable and we're holding that tension directly in our lats instead of doing a dead hang where we're just hanging out directly on the tissues and ligaments of our shoulder. Now I've moved over slightly directly to the squat rack because I wanna show you some lower body positioning. When you are doing a pull up, we don't wanna have your knees bent, don't wanna have your legs crossed, any of these factors. What we wanna do is actually what we call a hollow body position where your legs are straight down and your toes are actually pointed away from you, plantar flexed. This can actually create more tension directly in your abs if you get into posterior pelvic tilt and by extension, be an incredible exercise for training your abs. Interestingly enough, EMG studies are not the end all be all when it comes to muscle recruitment, but I remember reading this article years ago in T Nation by Brett Contreras, and it actually showed muscle activation on pull-ups in your abs was higher than most direct core exercises like crunches in your abs. And that speaks to how impactful training big compound exercises for performance can actually be in terms of developing your physique and training different muscles in your body when they are integrating instead of being isolated individually. All right, so when it comes to leg position, same thing, double overhand grip here. In that hollow body position, toes are pointed just away slightly, a little bit of tension, pulling up. 
and under control in a couple seconds. Now, one big issue that a lot of people face when it comes to doing their pull-ups, they focus so much on trying to get their head over the bar that they actually go into what we call anterior humeral glide. So we wanna think about pulling up to the point where we're leading almost our mid chest, our sternum, up to the bar instead of trying to force our head over the top of the bar. When we have that anterior humeral glide that I'm referring to, that can actually lead to some shoulder impingement and discomfort that can prevent you from being able to do a program like this consistently and it can be problematic for overall shoulder health and pull-ups. And so when it comes to the technique that you're using throughout, focus on good clean technique. We'll leave one or two reps in the tank on your sets and focus on quality and control. Later on, when we get to actually testing how many reps you can do, then we can go for broke and you have a little bit of leeway in terms of exercise technique getting sloppy because it's a test. But again, there's a huge difference between building strength and testing strength. Okay, now point number three is we have to actually test your pull-up strength, how many you can actually do if we're gonna be able to gauge the success of this coaching program. So here's what I would recommend. Before a workout. Yes, go through a typical warm up, make sure that your shoulders, elbows, everything is warmed up, the groove is greased, so to speak. Do a couple sets of even two to three reps on a pull up can just help reinforce and realign, get your body dialed in to be able to do that at higher repetition amounts. Now, what we're going to want to do one set pull ups as many as you can possibly get without having a pause on the bottom. So these are unbroken. It's not one, oh shit, I'm exhausted. No, it's doing these reps unbroken as many as you can. We're gonna use this initial number to gauge where you're beginning. So we can test against that number after 30 days. Number four, we're gonna do pull-ups four days per week. If you wanna get better at any particular exercise, increasing the training frequency is absolutely crucial. Remember, it's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. And if we can practice perfect technique more often, we improve neuromuscular efficiency. We improve things like rate coding, we improve things like inter and intramuscular coordination, where our body is able to send signals directly or get signals directly from our brain to our muscles and back and coordinate the action between different muscle groups more effectively. Again, long story short, the more you do something with great technique, the quicker you build that skill. The quicker you build that skill, the quicker you build strength, the quicker you improve performance, the quicker you can build muscle specifically. So in this program, what I would recommend, if you don't have access to a home gym like I do, and you're not hitting the gym quite as often, get one of those pull-up attachments where you can hook them on inside of a door frame. Those can work wonders. Now, what we're gonna be doing, as I mentioned, training the pull-up four days per week. How I like to set this up, many of my clients will use what we call an upper-lower training split, training four days per week. So, one day is an upper body workout, strength focused, next day is a lower body workout. The third day is another upper body workout, maybe more of a hypertrophy muscle building focus, so reps are gonna be a little bit higher, and then we have a lower body workout on the fourth day. When we have this frequency, again, we can add a pull-up in to each and every single one of these work days, but we're gonna adjust and change the rep schemes that we're using within so we're building strength, so we're building muscle and local muscular endurance without running into common issues like elbow pain, wrist pain, and shoulder dysfunction. And so when it comes to the pull-up specifically, let's say your first day is strength focused, that's when we're gonna do our strength focused pull-up. We want this to be the primary focus of our upper body training. On the next day, a lower body workout, we're gonna do more of an endurance focus. The reason is we wanna have some level of recovery for our central nervous system, our tendons, joints, and ligaments from that heavy loading from the first day. The third day of the week, this is gonna be our second upper body workout. We're gonna focus more on on building muscle. These are gonna be your classic set and rep schemes between six, eight, 10, even 12 reps per set. Now the fourth day is gonna be a primary lower body day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have, again, a higher rep focus, building local muscular endurance with different rep schemes to accumulate more volume and build that skill so you can improve your pull-up performance. Strategy number five, we're gonna hit a number of different set and rep schemes so we build different qualities. Now, as I mentioned previously, right, we have different focuses on each day. We're gonna go through each one. Now, when it comes to the strength focus day, the reason we wanna do some strength work with lower set reps, when we build absolute strength, we are also going to improve relative strength as long as our body fat and body weight stays the same or actually goes down, which if you're dialing in your nutrition, should go down. So what we wanna do here is we wanna set a goal of 12 to 15 reps with strength focused rep schemes. What I like to do in a case like this, we can use a rep scheme like three sets of five, four sets of three to four. Even five sets of three can work incredibly well. And when we focus on building strength, we're using added weight in terms of a pull-up, right? We're using a dip belt. This is going to first, yes, build strength, but by extension of building that strength, we're gonna be able to improve our muscle fiber recruitment we're going to be able to build that strength where we can start to use more weight for more reps over time, which leads to more strength, more mass, and more local muscular endurance, 
as we're training those qualities in addition. The important thing to focus on these is we need to have first adequate rest between our sets. We don't wanna take a 90 second rest, we want two to three minutes at least between these. And when we're doing these reps, even though the weight's gonna be heavy, even though it's gonna be difficult, we want to avoid grinding. We wanna be able to focus on really good quality rep technique so we are practicing that perfect technique across the board. Now the second rep scheme that we're gonna focus on is gonna be a hypertrophy or muscle building rep scheme. Here, the target reps are gonna be 25 reps. So in a case like this, we wanna be focused on getting reps of six, eight, 10, even 12 reps per set, depending on your levels of strength. In this case, when we're focusing on these rep schemes, we're gonna have enough muscle building tension, yes, to build strength, but because the rep scheme is gonna be higher, we're gonna have more time under tension, that creates more metabolic stress, AKA the pump to help you build some muscle and start building local muscular endurance. So what can we use here for set and rep schemes? You can go three sets of eight. You can go 10, eight, six. As long as we're within those rep ranges, which you'll have directly in the program, that's gonna be able to build some strength and some muscle preparing you to double your chin ups over the next 30 days. Now the third rep scheme that we're gonna focus on, we're actually gonna use ladders. So a ladder is very simple. It's like one rep, down two reps down, three reps down, four reps down, five reps down, six reps down, and then we can go back. So the reason we can do a ladder, this allows us to accumulate a ton of volume while still paying attention to optimal technique. When we can continue to improve this technique across the board and with more volume, we're gonna build that local muscular endurance and start to build some size. So if you're somebody who is getting fewer than six reps when you do that chin up test in the beginning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use ladders and you're gonna go one up to five and then back down. So here's what it looks like. One rep, quick rest, two reps, quick rest, three reps, quick rest, four, five. Then we go four, three, two, one. And we continue on this until we accumulate 50 total reps. Because you're training lower body on these endurance days, I'm gonna give you two options. The first option is to do your pull-up workout completely separate from your lower body training. Otherwise, what you can do is you can add this towards the end or at least after your main strength lift. For example, if you do a deadlift on this particular day, one thing you might wanna do is hit the deadlift. That's gonna allow you to take advantage of the improved neuromuscular recruitment that you have from lifting heavy and then be able to do this pull up with better levels of performance. So the total rep number that we're chasing for on each of these two days is gonna be 50. If you are doing fewer than six reps on that pull up, we wanna go up to five when we're doing the ladder. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we stair step down. You continue on that until you hit all 50. If you're somebody who's doing over six reps, we wanna use six as that number for the ladder. So one, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and on we go until you accumulate 50 total reps. Now, as these sets start to get a little bit harder, you start to accumulate the fatigue, you can rest as long as needed, as long as you can hit that performance on the next one. So let's say you do two reps, three reps, four reps, now you're starting to feel the burn, you're starting to get a little bit gassed, take an extra 30 seconds, take a minute, as long as you can complete those reps cleanly, you're gonna be in a great position. Now, if you can do over six reps, here's what we're gonna do differently. You're gonna go two, four, six, and then down in the same order, right? Because you can handle more volume, this is gonna allow you to get to that 50 rep set without doing a million sets in between. But the same principles apply. If you need a little bit more time between, that's completely fine as long as your technique is dialed in. So it could be two, four, six, four, two, four, six, four, two, and on you go until you accumulate 50 total reps of pull-ups. Did you find this helpful? If so, pound that like button and hit subscribe. Now, if you want a free copy of our chiseled muscle cheat sheet, the no BS way to help you lose body fat and build lean muscle in 90 days, make sure that you go to the description below and download your free copy. Any questions, drop them in the comments. We can't wait to see you with the next video.